Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Connecting Applications, Systems and Partners with Ease using Ultra Studio Webinar. I'm Sajid Dilshan and I'm the product lead of Ultra Studio. So this is the first of the webinar series we are planning to do. And in this webinar, we are going to talk about installing Ultra Studio, introduction on connectors, processors and integration projects. And uh, I'll walk you through on creating an integration flow for a sample use case. And uh, next, let's create a project using sample repository and run it, debug it. And so, uh, as I've said, you have a lot of ground to cover during this webinar. And without any further delay, let's get started. First, let's go to www.adrologic.com and then click on the Get Started button. Over here, we have two options. Either we can download the Ultra Studio with full IntelliJ IDEA distribution, or we can download the Ultra Studio plugin. So by default, the correct platform is selected. For the moment, I will uh, just download the plugin. And uh, next you need to specify your information, you know, such as your organization, and then your name, and the your email, and after that your uh, title or role. And then after that, select the uh, terms and conditions checkbox and click submit button. Next you will get a notification saying, okay, download instructions have been sent to your email. And um, if you go and check your email, you will see the download uh, like download link uh, for the plugin or the IntelliJ IDEA distribution, depending on the one you have selected. Then it contains a client key. Let's see what is later on. And apart from that, it contains a link for installation and user guide as well. So I have already downloaded the plugin and it's available for all platforms, uh, Linux, Mac OS and uh, Windows as well. Later I tell you how to install this plugin. And if you download the IntelliJ IDEA, uh, you know, first one is for Windows, you will download Windows zip file. And when you extract it under the bin directory, uh, idea.64.exe if you're on 64-bit Windows and idea.exe for 32-bit Windows. And for Mac OS, you will download a Mac uh, zip file. If you extract it, there's an IntelliJ IDEA CE file, right click on it and open it. And then um, for Linux, you will get a tar.gc file, extract it, and in the bin directory, there's an idea.sh file, execute it for Linux. And then for all platforms, you will get a zip file. If you extract it in the bin directory, there is executable file for all the platforms. Now let's see how we can install Atlas Studio plugin on IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, you need IntelliJ IDEA 2017.2 or higher in order to install Atlas Studio plugin. Click on configure and then uh, plugins. Then click on the uh, install plugin from disk button and then select the uh, one you have downloaded for your environment. And then after that, you need to restart IntelliJ IDEA. Afterwards, you know, if you go into plugin section again, you can see a Logic Ultra Studio plugin has been successfully installed. Now we need to create a new integration project. You know, uh, let's see. First, let's see what an integration project is. So an uh, integration project or an Ultra project is sort of the basic deployment unit of Project X runtime. It can contain multiple integration flows, subflows, you know, that uh, spring beans, which is required by its integration flows. And then this Ultra project is sort of, you know, con uh, uh, supposed to contain all the dependencies in, uh, you know, single archive. And then this self-containing design allow uh, multiple projects to run in the same runtime without, you know, conflicting each other. And if you go into developer.hydrologic.com documentation and under the project X documentation, you can get more information about what an integration project is from this documentation. So uh, now let's create a new project and then uh, select the empty ultra project. And after that, uh, specify a valid uh, Java JDK as the uh, project SDK. Next, click on next button and then for the group ID, I'll just give a uh, com.sajit.test and um, for the version, I'll give 1.0. Next, I'll leave Ultra SB version as 17.07.1 and the rest as intact. Click on next button. After that, I'm presented with a list of connectors. So uh, first of all, let's see what a uh, connector is. What, what, what does the meaning of connector? So a uh, connector is actually uh, used to integrate project X integration flows with uh, external systems. We have uh, ingress connectors and egress connectors. Ingress connectors sort of acts as a message entry point to the integration flows where, you know, 
through an ingress connector you can inject message into an integration flow and then we have egress connectors which acts as a message exit point so which you, you can use egress connectors to send message out into external systems and uh, if you go into the developer.idrologic.com slash connectors page you can see all the available ingress and egress connectors and their you know documentation and so on so for our project um, I will select uh, HTTP NIO connector and click on next button now we get the processor list, list. so let's see uh, what the processor is first of all um, processors are sort of like the most important component of the project X ecosystem you know, you know a processor is actually capable of execu executing a particular operation such as you know XST validation logging messages and transformation and so on so in a request and response flow processing elements are used in both request and response path and then apart from that you can write your own processing element f in order to implement your custom logic and if you go to you know developer.radiologic.com slash processors that's a list of the pro all the available predefined processes available and you know you can go to the documentation and get an overall idea so you have basic idea about what the processor is and for our project I'll select you know the flow control and the logging processes and click on next button after that for the project name I'll just give a webinar project and click on the finish button then after a while an IntelliJ idea will successfully create you know the webinar project for us to start developing integration flows as you can see over here the indexing is happening in IntelliJ IDEA so uh, while indexing is happening some features might not be available in IntelliJ IDEA so once the project is created you can see the project structure it's similar to a Maven project and if you open the pom.xml file you can see the process and connectors we have added as the dependencies in the uh, pom.xml file and we have a project.xpml file as well I'll explain it to you what that it is later and another important thing is in the Maven project tab make sure all the dependencies are added before you know you start creating an integration flows if not uh, click on the re-import all Maven project and make sure all the project dependencies are correctly loaded so after that let's create our integration flow make sure all the integration flows are contained within the conf directory so right click on the config directory and then select new uh, uh, integration flow and then for the integration flow I'll give sample flow and ok click on ok button this will create a new integration flow and we have text and design view for the integration flow um, if you cannot see both text and design view that's probably because the indexing is happening in IntelliJ IDEA please wait until the indexing is over and then we have the design view and uh, in the uh, component palette you know there are connectors and processors and then there is ingress connectors and egress connectors for the HTTP and IO connector we have added and the flow control processing elements as well in the component palette and uh, over here we have the main toolbar uh, there are with a couple of buttons you know to toggle the component palette and then uh, to toggle the properties pane and then to toggle the grid view and then to refresh the design view of the integration project and then uh, to highlight the message execution path which I will explain to you later and then other buttons as well so uh, in order to you know create a component just drag and drop it from the component palette and then specify a component ID I'll give HTTP connector and then click on OK button. OK, we have the first connector on our design pane, and then this is the property pane where you have to specify, you know, uh, properties for the ingress connector, which is capable of, you know, um, listing an H, uh, to an HTTP client. You know, we, you need to specify a port and a service path so the ingress connector can listen on that port and service path, and the other uh, properties as well. And in the documentation tab, there's you know a quick glance of the uh, documentation of the ingress connector. If you click on the more link, you can you know open the full documentation on your browser and go through it. And now for the basic you know in the basic properties, let's specify h280 as HTTP port and service path as you know dot star slash uh, echo uh, proxy. And then uh, if you 
after that uh, we'll save the configuration it will we'll get a message saying successfully save the settings for the component HTTP connector and then you can clone the component by clicking on that button and then uh, specify a new component ID and click on OK button it will clone the existing component and add the new component to the design pane if you click on it you can see the property pane under there you know the, with the new component ID and the properties are the same because we just cloned the previous one and uh, the next button is you can reset the settings which will remove all the specified settings for the component and the last button is to delete the component from the design pane and if you want to undo it you can you know press ctrl z and it will undo it and you can get the property pane by clicking settings button and then rotate the component you know with the ports port rotating and then delete it using the button and then if you go into the text view when you add a new component a new uh, spring bean will be added with the specified component id with all the properties into the text view and apart from that the position details are added to the text view as well and another thing is uh, when you specify the properties you can externalize those properties by clicking on this slider so if we click on it and save the configuration and we go back to the text view we can see for the property a placeholder is added over here and if you cl control click on it you can see the actual value on the defaulted properties file which resides in resources directory the which is pretty useful when you want to deploy this project on a runtime and you want to externalize those properties and uh, apart from that when let's see how we can you know add another component into the design pane and just drag and drop in drop it into the design pane and specify a component id and then all you have to do is just you know uh, drag and drop and connect these, those two ports and it's you know that's simple to connect two components you can add as many components you want into the design pane and start developing your solution you know by connecting those components all right so we have created our first project and you know we have an sort of like overall idea about ultra studio design view and now let's see the sample use case which we are going to build in this webinar in this example we have this request message for a purchase ordering system we receive this message with this content and uh, it contains an xml attribute called vendor and the response message will be this so the logic is that our request message is sent from a HTTP client and then we evaluate whether the vendor XML attribute value is EU74, US54 or another value. If it's EU74, we need to add a purchase ID attribute to the message and send it to a vendor. That means uh, send it to a backend system. Next, the response from the vendor must be sent back to the client. If the vendor is US54, uh, we send message directly to the vendor and obtained response will be sent back to the client. If it's another value, we just send an error message to the client. All right. So uh, without any further ado, now let's start um, building our integration flow. First thing we need to do is select all the previously added component and press delete button, which will give us a clean canvas to start developing our integration flow. First, as the uh, example, we need the uh, HTTP ingress connector to get messages from the HTTP client. So I'm going to add a HTTP ingress connector into the canvas and specify the component ID. All right. As for the port, I'll specify 8280 and service path would be slash service slash order. Mm, and I'll save the configuration. And next thing is... Um, I'm going to log the message which is coming from the HTTP client and I'll just drag and drop a logger component and specify the logger component ID request logger and uh, press OK button and for the log template I'll just say the log message will be request uh, message payload um, at message dot payload so as you can see in the description you can extract certain uh, parameters from the message and log it in the log template so um, there are a couple of uh, properties you can extract you know using the syntax which is specified in the description and then after for the log level i'll sp specify info but usually this sort of log should be a trace log and then i'll save the configuration 
So next, uh, I'll uh, connect the ingress connector into the logger processing element. Next thing uh, we need to do is, for according to our example, we need to extract the vendor attribute value and check whether it's equal to U74 or US54. Now for that I need you know XML attribute value extractor processing element. If I look at our processors, you know I don't have that sort of a processing element. So uh, one thing I could do is go to Tools, Ultra Studio, Component Registry, and then select the module. And uh, under the Processor section, I'll just search for XML. And you can see the XML operation components are available to manipulate you know XML payload contain. I'll uh, select that one and press OK. Now the Maven project needs to be import imported and then if I go into Maven projects tab, um, we can see the new uh, component is added as a dependency and the design view will be automatically refreshed. If I look at the process again, I can see okay the XML uh, processes are available. Now let's add the get attribute component and drag and drop it over here and specify vendor extractor as component ID. Okay, so for the properties, I need XPath. As in the request message, XPath is vendor attribute in order root element. So it should be slash vendor. Oh, oops, um, sorry. Uh, actually, it should be order. Order. Uh, since we are starting from root tag, it should be slash order slash at vendor and save that into a variable so a uh, variable has the same concept as in programming language uh, you can assign various values into variables and you know use those throughout the integration flow so uh, i'm going to extract this attribute value and uh, save it to a variable named vendor id save it and then connect these two components okay Next, I need to check whether the vendor ID value is EU74 or US54. Okay, for that, uh, let's use a switch case element. Add switch component over here. Okay. Uh, for the predicate type, I'm going to evaluate the variable I have declared earlier. The variable name is, let me have a quick look. Okay, it's vendor ID. So the uh, predicate type is variable variable name is vendor id and uh, okay what is the type it's a string okay let me scroll it up a little bit okay predicate function is i want to check whether it equals so save it and then let's connect it okay so after that i need a case element okay so okay this is to check whether the you know the eu case branch so Let's name it EU case value. And uh, for the case value, it should be EU underscore 74. Let's specify it, EU underscore 74. So uh, for the switch element, you can see there are three outputs. One is for case output, uh, default output, and on exception output. Okay, uh, so I'm going to connect uh, case element to case output. Next, I need another case element for a us underscore 54 so i'm going to select this component and clone it so this would be use case us case branch okay so drag it over here and connect to case output for the properties it's the same since i cloned it so i need to uh, change it to us underscore 54 us underscore 54 and save it all right so after that, according to our little flow diagram over here, I need to add purchase ID attribute to the message. So uh, for the EU case path, okay, uh, let's add, let's include add attribute processing element over here. Let's say uh, purchase ID setter as component ID, okay. So in here, I need to add uh, purchase ID as an attribute you know to the order root element in the request message so the export would be slash order qualified name would be purchase id and a namespace uri is optional so value would be for this i'm just going to specify hard-coded value tx underscore 2432 and save it 
and connect it with the UK element. Okay. Next, I need an uh, HTTP address connector to send the message to EU vendor backend system. So, HTTP and address connector. Okay, uh, specify uh, EU sender as component ID. Alright, so drag it over here. Okay, uh, so the properties, what I, uh, what I did is I have created a mock REST endpoint in mockie.io uh, at this URL. So, uh, when I send uh, this request to mockie.io, it will send, you know, this response. So, this is the URL of our backend. So, this egress connector will send our message to mockie.io. So, uh, the destination host would be www.mockie.io. So, the port is optional. By default, it would be 80. Next, uh, I need to specify the servi service path of uh, uh, EU path. Actually, uh, it should be you copy it and then paste it over here. Okay, save it and okay now we need to complete the us path as well so according to our diagram for us path we directly send the message to us vendor so we need another http egress connector uh, we can drag and drop it over here oh, but i'm going to clone it this egress connector let's say uh, us center as component id all right so drag it over here um, if I go into the properties, the configuration is, you know, the same as the US one since I cloned it. But I'll copy the correct URL from the US response. This is the correct response path. Copy it and paste it over here. Okay, so uh, now we need to connect the US case branch into the egress connector. Right, excellent. Next, uh, we need to send the response uh, from the vendor backend system you know back to the client according to our diagram so first uh, let's uh, log, log the response message payload so add the logger component over here and make it response logger okay uh, so for the logger uh, log template let's specify uh, um response message from vendor i want to log the message payload here so it would be at message dot payload and next save it so uh, since i have not specified a mandatory value i get an error saying fail to save settings for com uh, component response logger input for log level field is mandatory so if there's a mandatory field you need to specify those otherwise configuration saving will be failed so uh, i'm going to make it an info log but in real case it should be trace let's rotate the component and you know so uh, this is the response port so that means the message will be sent to corresponding backend system by this egress connector and the response from that system will be emitted from this output so let's connect it to the logger element okay so uh, after that you know we can uh, send the message from the logger into the client so this is the input port for the http ingress connector any message coming into this port will be sent back to the client which uh, initiated the http request all right so now our flow is almost complete let's uh, run this component uh, flow validator and check whether the flow we have created so far is correct or not First, select the module to run the flow validation and click the play button. So uh, it will validate the project and show the validation result. It says uh, validation by HTTP ingress connector failed. At least one of the branches of the integration flow starting from this ingress connector is not uh, completed properly. And uh, again, there is a, a warning saying validation by switch control validator failed. The default output is not connected to a processing element or an ingress connector. So you can see from first error, the message originating from ingress connector goes through this path. And what happens if message is emitted from this default output? So this path is incomplete. That is the first error is saying. And this the second warning is actually about the same thing as well. So um, as for our diagram, when the vendor ID is another value, we need to send an error message to the client. So for that, uh, 
first let's log the message we receive we add a error logger login processing element and we'll say uh, received an uh, invalid message with payload I just want to log the message payload again so I'll say at message dot payload and the log level would be error in this case again save it and uh, let's rotate the component and connect it okay let's just um, uh, I'll just rotate it one more time okay so uh, next I want to send the error message saying okay the, this is the error code this is the reason invalid vendor ID to the client so for that uh, let's see okay uh, payload All right so we need another component from the component registry to manipulate message payload right so in the processors payload okay we have processing element to manipulate payload such as uh, saving extracting payload setting payload from strings and so on so let's select it and click ok so uh, now we import changes and go to the Maven projects tab we new process added you know as a dependency now we have you know a payload manipulation component over here and we need the uh, string payload setter okay drag it over here and say let's say error message setter okay so for the error message I'll just copy paste this error message I want to display this error message okay and paste it over here save it uh, no I'll rotate it and then connect it and then we want to send the error message to the client so I'll just connect these two ports okay now let's see what happens when I run the flow validation again okay it says validation passed brilliant so that means our flow is correct according to flow validator now we can run and test our integration flow so uh, first thing we need to uh, do is uh, create a new run configuration so click here and select edit configuration uh, click on the plus button and select ultra usbx server so by default the correct configurations will be selected you don't have to change anything but for the name uh, let's say uh, webinar project apply and ok so after that we can run the project by clicking on the play button over here so now we get a warning saying please specify the client key which you have received via email in ultra studio settings so if you click on the link settings will be opened or else you can go into the IntelliJ idea preferences then under tool section ultra studio if you remember in the email we got when we downloaded the ultra studio we got a client key with that email so first let's copy the client key next uh, paste it over here click apply okay so now if you run the project again it will start and say okay android logic ultra studio ultra usb x uh, started successfully so now our project is up and running now let's uh, send a message so if you remember we have this request message and we need a HTTP client to send a message so another good thing about Ultra Studio is that we, there is an inbuilt toolbox in Ultra Studio toolbox click on the plus button and select HTTP client so this is a sample HTTP client so over here ingress connector is listening on port 8280 slash uh, service slash order path and this is our incoming request message I'll select it and then I'll copy it and paste it over here so this is our request and I'm doing a post request so let's send the message and see all right so I got an error message uh, saying invalid vendor ID so if I go and highlight the message execution path we can see it went through the default switch path switch part branch actually so this is because the invalid vendor idea has specified over here so it should be either client EU 74 or US 54 so first let's change it to EU 74 74 and uh, send the message again okay now we get a con uh, confirmation response for our order 
So if I highlight the message path, I can see the message got executed like this. So in here, before adding the purchase ID attribute uh, to the message, sort of the payload is uh, like this. We have only vendor and ID attributes. Next, after adding the attribute in the message payload, I can see the new attribute purchase ID. So uh, apart from that, in here you can see the transport headers, uh, scope variables, the I mean the vendor ID variable we have added earlier, and uh, also the message properties and message context properties and so on. So uh, this is for the EU seventy four, and for the sake of completion, let's send US fifty four as well. So US underscore fifty four. So now I get 200 response. So if I go and highlight the message path again, now the message got executed through this path. So if I see the console log, I can see the log messages we have logged uh, through logger processing element earlier, the request and response payload over here. And this is the first error log for the incorrected vendor ID message we have sent uh, first. So uh, now let's go back and specify an invalid vendor ID. So okay, and if you send a message, we get an error response. But the thing is, the HTTP status code is 200. So actually, it should be like 400. So in order to change that, let's write a custom processing element within Ultra Studio and add it to the, our integration flow. So. Uh, in order to write a custom processing element, uh, what we need to do is go to Java directory, right click on the package name and select new processing element. So let's specify status code setter as processing element name and click on OK button. So now for the display name of processing element, let's add status code setter. I'll leave the type as custom and as for the description, let's specify set custom HTTP response status code. So after that, we need to declare X processing element variable. I'll explain what these uh, you know uh, variables and these outputs are later. Just follow me. So the display of the display name of the output annotation is uh, next element. Um, okay, so. Uh, Okay, let's make this private. Okay, now for the private int status code. So by default, let's initialize it to 200. Next, I'm going to annotate it with a parameter. The display name is uh, status code. And uh, the description would be uh, specify the HTTP response status code. The the default value would be the default value would be 200 since we are sort of like specifying a default value this is not a mandatory field hence is optional true next uh, after that we'll add uh, getters and setters to these two variables okay so uh, now this process message method must contain all the logic which has to be executed once the message is passed into this processing element. So in here, let's uh, set the status code of the message. We can do message context dot get message dot use the set response code method. So okay, then over here we need to add next element dot process message message context. Okay. So now uh, we need to compile it in the terminal tab. I'll execute maven clean install minus so. Okay, it got compiled uh, successfully. Now, uh, if we go into integration flow and refresh the flow, I can see in the processes under custom section my new processing element. So I'll drag and drop it over here. Say status setter. Okay, now in the property pane, I can see status code. So as you have guessed, any property which is shown in the property pane uh, must be annotated with parameter annotation, you know, with the display name, description, and other properties, and so on. 
So, and this output entered variable corresponds to this output. If you hover over it, you can see the display name. So, you can add as many outputs as you require and those outputs will be shown in processing element which can be used to connect the elements to other components. And you know, if you go to the installation and user guidebook, it contains all the information about this output and parameter annotations and their respective properties and how to use those when writing custom processing elements in your integration flow. So all the documentation is there. You can always go through that installation and user guide documentation. So uh, now let's first rotate it and then delete this old connection and connect payload setter into our new processor and connect this output over here. And we need to specify the status code. Since this is a bad request, I'll say 400 and save it. So, okay. Now let's run the project again and uh, send a message with an invalid vendor ID and see if it works. And we should get a 400 re response. Okay, it's starting. Right, uh, now if I send the message from the toolbox again. Yep, I get a 400 response. Yep, it works. So now if I highlight the message part, I can see the message went through this way. So to sum it up, what we have done is we have implemented this uh, message flow where we get a message then extract an XML attribute and then take a decision based on the XML value and on one part we modify the XML payload and send it to a backend system and in the other part we send the original message to the backend system then the response from the system is sent back to the original client. Now let's see how we can create a sample project from our sample repository. So first thing, uh, let's go to files, new, and select project. So previously we selected empty ultra project. Now we need to select sample ultra project and then specify a valid JDK as the project SDK and click next button. So for the ultra USB version, I'll specify 17.07.1 .07 and rest I'll leave as it is and then click on the next button. After that, sample repository will be loaded. As you can see, there is a number of sample projects available for you to try out. If you hover over a sample, you can directly download it here or you can go into the detail section. So this is a detail section for direct proxy sample. You can go to the use case description and you can go to the full documentation from over here. So this contains detailed description of, you know, the prerequisites and the configuration of the sample and from here you can go to the source code of the sample as well and next you can download the sample by clicking on the open button next uh, click on the next button and I'll name this uh, direct proxy sample and click on finish button so I'll open it in a new window so uh, now our sample project is successfully created. As you can see, all the Maven dependencies in the Maven project tabs are correctly resolved. And you know, it, now we are good to go. So if you go into the samples, there are uh, pre-created integration flows, you know, which is ready to run. And we can head over to the documentation and see how to run it under the, you know, testing the integration project section over down here. It says start HTTP server instance on port 9000, which exposes an echo service. As I mentioned earlier, Ultra Studio comes with quite handy toolbox. And apart from that, we have a TCP dump tool and then a Jetty server. So we can start Jetty server on port 9000 and it will expose an uh, echo service on this uh, slash service slash echo service resource path. And uh, now we need to send a post HTTP request containing any payload into 8280 slash direct proxy path. So as we have done previously, let's uh, create a new run configuration with, for the address BX server. Let's name it direct proxy and apply OK. So now let's run it. OK, so it's starting. So as earlier, let's use our HTTP client. Uh, so 
As for the documentation and it says the request path, we can send any payload and according to the English connector con configuration, we need to change the resource path into slash direct proxy. So it can be any payload. So I'll say hello world as the request and the method is uh, post and the content type is text plain. And uh, when I send a message, okay, now I get 200 response with hello world. So if you highlight the message execution path, we can see the message got executed over this path and we can see the message payload as well. So these samples are actually uh, quite useful if you are, you know, totally new to Ultra Studio and, you know, you want to uh, get a feeling, you know, get started quickly and you can fool around with samples to get, you know, overall idea about Ultra Studio projects and the whole environment uh, in general. So in this webinar, I'll show you another sample, which is a JMS transaction sample. So I have already downloaded and set it up over here. You can uh, go to the documentation and, you know, I'll explain what uh, it does use in the flow. So we have a JMS ingress connector, which is listening to a queue named the request queue. Next, we send the message within a transaction to two JMS queues. One is uh, booking desk queue and the other one is audit queue. So we have an incoming JSON message. Uh, next, we convert it to a XML message and do an XSD validation and send it to booking destination queue. So if the XSD validation fails, we log the message and then we throw an exception saying validation failed. So in that case, since we have a transaction scope as in the highlighted area, the incoming message should either go to the both uh, these destinations at once or should not be delivered to any queue at all. So if the XST validation fails, message should be rolled back to the original queue without going into any destination queues. So as per the documentation, um, ActiveMQ is a prerequisite. Installation details are on the documentation as well. So if you remember, earlier I have briefly mentioned about Project XPML. So this is where we specify all the external resources. So in order to connect to ActiveMQ, we need a JMS connection factory and a transaction manager for transaction to work. So use it, right click here and select uh, resource template. From that select ActiveMQ JMS and click continue. So next we can specify resource ID prefix, broker URL, username, password and so on. So after clicking the save button, all the configuration will be added to the project XPML file. And as an example, for the JMS ingress connector under the connection factory, you can select the spring caching connection factory which we have declared over here. So um, I have actually uh, ActiveMQ installed and set up running. You can see the ActiveMQ console over here. First thing is for the incoming JMS message, we need a source queue name request queue. So let's create it. So uh, and if you go into the documentation, we need to send the sample JSON message down over here as specified here. I'll copy it and then uh, send to. So paste it, make uh, make it make persistent delivery and send. Now the message is in the queue. Now let's uh, run the project as we have done earlier by creating a run configuration. Let's say JMS sample apply. OK. So, okay, now uh, we are ready to run our sample, JMS sample. So, by clicking on the play button, let's run it. And now if you go into the ActiveMQ console and refresh it, we can see the message has been sent to the booking desk queue and audit queue. If we highlight the execution path, we can see the message got executed through this path. Now, let's see if you know whether the transaction works correctly. So, let's uh, purge these two queues first. Then... Copy the request message, send message into the request queue with a, you know, invalid message with an invalid field by changing this one field and make it persistent delivery and send it. So let's see what happens. So in the log, you can see the message has been rolled back due to XST validation failure. So what happens is the rollback message is uh, retried several times by the active MQ when we roll back the message and the lastly, the message is moved uh, into dead letter queue. So in the ActiveMQ console, we can see the message has not been sent to either booking desk queue or audit queue, but it has been sent to ActiveMQ dead letter queue. So the transaction works as we expected. Since the validation failed, message has not been delivered to either of the destination queue, but it has been sent to the dead letter queue.
So that marks the end of our webinar. Uh, during this webinar, a couple of questions were raised by the participants. And the first question was, uh, how can we use a version control system in integration projects? As I've uh, shown during the webinar, the integration flow is actually saved as a Spring XML configuration file. So you can easily use uh, any version control system, you know, like JIT or Mercurial in your project and your team members can uh, collaboratively edit and develop uh, integration flows uh, within a, a single uh, project. And uh, next question was, uh, actually how much is Ultra Studio? So Ultra Studio is actually completely free. Uh, it's our development environment and it will always be free for the developers. But however, the Ultra SPX runtime within the Ultra Studio is actually valid only for 30 days. But uh, if you feel like you know you want more time to test it, you want more time to develop it, you can always drop us an email at license at edrologic.com and we'll be more than happy to extend your uh, runtime license. And uh, apart from that, we'll be able to assist you in uh, to make your use case more concrete and um, you know with more resources we have for your uh, to improve your use case as well. And the other question was, uh, so now we have developed the integration project and uh, with Ultra Studio. So next, uh, how can we use this on a production environment? So as I have shown during, uh, you know, writing a custom processing element, actually uh, we can create the production ready artifact by executing Maven clean install command. So uh, it will create a bundle with uh, .xpr extension in the target directory. And this is actually a, a self-contained artifact which I have explained uh, during the integration project introduction session. So uh, this will contain all the dependencies, uh, flows and resources and all the required uh, elements for the integration project. And the uh, next thing you can do is you can deploy this uh, XPR bundle or the artifact in the Ultra SBX which is our production ready runtime environment. So uh, you can deploy this project on Ultra SBX instance or in, uh, in a cluster of Ultra SBX instances uh, and uh, run it. And apart from that, uh, you can use the iMonitor X, which is uh, the web console or the our uh, monitoring administration and you know management solution for Ultra SBX runtime instances to you know view the statistics and the you know the messages passing through your integration projects and everything using iMonitor X. So our uh, next webinar will be uh, about Ultra SBX and iMonitor X and hope you would join us on the next webinar as well. So and with uh, these questions, um, so we are going to, you know, wrap up the webinar. I uh, hope the webinar has been very informative and thank you all for thank you all so much for joining and, you know, actively participating.